Ever look around at your NASA's configuration page and see something called iSCSI? I know SCSI is a fun word to say, SCSI. but let's focus on what iSCSI is and how you can get in on that action. The way to think about a NAS or Network Access Storage is that it is a file level server system where the computer is presented with folders and files in the familiar tree structure over the network. This is pretty simple and straightforward to set up and utilize by most NAS users. Users can use the file browser to access the file share, and no special software is needed. Using the iSCSI protocol is much like using a SAN or storage area network, which presents storage as a block level device over the network. So your computer will see the raw bits like a physical drive instead of files and folders. This can be deployed as high performance block level storage and really good for server applications like databases and also applications that need local storage for install like virtual machines. I'm gonna use the NASIS creation wizard to help me create a iSCSI target. In the intro screen here, we see that it tells us we need to share a NAS space or LUN as a virtual disk with a client. So the first thing we need to do is to give the target a name. I will just call it QNAP-iSCSI. Then we can give the target an alias, and I will just call it the same thing in lowercase. So QNAP-iSCSI. And by default, the allow clustered access to this target is check. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave that be. And if I expand the advanced settings, we can see that the NAS can calculate CRC checksum for their data and headers. I'm gonna leave these off to cover them in a separate video. And notice the box where I filled in the target name is highlighted in pink, which means something is not kosher. So hovering over the field, we see the pop-up box that says the target name must be single byte, alphabet, or number. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of the dash in the name and then do the same thing for the alias. After hitting next, I am presented with the CHAP settings, which stands for Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. This is basically an authentication step between the iSCSI target and the initiator. And you can choose to use it or not. As you can see, there is a requirement for a 12 to 16 character password. I am actually going to leave this turned off for this demo. So after I hit next again, I get the summary screen where we can verify the information we had just set in the prior screens. And the thing to note is that the last line says, create a LUN and map it to this target. And then the check is on. So we're gonna just go ahead and leave that and continue on, which will help us create the LUN. Now that we are finished with creating a target, we need to create a LUN or logical unit number. And basically we are identifying some space on the NAS as a block device. So we're gonna go ahead and select the storage pool from where we're gonna allocate this drive space from. In my case, I only have one storage pool, so it makes that easy. And the NAS tells me that I have about 250 gigs of free space. The next item we choose from is the type of space allocation method, either thick or thin. So thick is where all the space you requested for is pre-allocated up front. This generally gives faster performance, but limits the amount of space that other virtual machines can use. Thin, on the other hand, is where space is allocated only when it is needed and the actual space taken grows as the amount of data written grows. So these disks are quick to create and great for maximizing storage space, but slower during runtime as every time the volume grows, the new space need to be erased before it can be used to write data. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select the thin provisioning for this demo. Next, we can choose to name the LUN and determine the size. I'm gonna go check the box for maximum to use up the rest of the volume. And I'm going to expand the advanced settings. And we see that we can adjust the sector size, the alert threshold, and other settings. I'm gonna leave these as the defaults. 
when I click on the next button, we get an information pop-up reminding us that since we chose the thin provisioning, the volumes will grow to take up pool space as we write more data. So keep that in mind, if you have multiple LUNs, you may not have enough storage if all the LUNs max out on their capacity. And as we finish and the NAS creates this volume, we can see the iSCSI target list that contains the LUN that I just created. The capacity and status will change as the LUN is created. And when the NAS has completed the creation, we can see that the allocated percentage is at zero as expected. Now that we have a iSCSI volume on our SAN, we can connect to it and use it as a disk using any operating system. To use it with Windows, click on the search bar at the bottom and type in iSCSI initiator and then launch the app. In the first tab, the target tab, we see that we have no discovered targets. So up here we can go ahead and type in the IP number of our NAS and then click on quick discover. Verify that the connection was made as the target is now in the discovered target list and the status says connected. And then go ahead and click done. Now we can open up a file explorer window. We see no new devices that we can use. Now let's open the disk management by right clicking on the Windows start icon. So here we get a pop-up asking us whether we want to initialize the available disk. Double check to make sure that this is the, in fact the NAS and not your operating system drive or your other data drives. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the default MBR partitioning scheme selected and click OK. Now you can see that the unallocated disk being online and I will select that 250 gig disk and right click and select new simple volume. I'm then going to step through the process and to assign the iSCSI drive the letter S for SCSI and then format the volume as XFAT for better compatibility with uh, operating systems other than Windows. And I'm going to go ahead and name the volume iSCSI 250GB. And as I click finish, after a few seconds, we see that Windows has assigned a drive letter to this volume. Uh, it has the name of iSCSI 250G. It has the file system of XFAT. And then if we go over and check on File Explorer, we see that the volume is now available to be accessed. So to verify that I can access the iSCSI disk, I'm now going to copy some files to it, just dragging and dropping from my videos folder. And as you can see, the iSCSI disk is treated like any other directly connected hard drive. We can right click onto the S drive and then get the properties tab. Here we see the used space and free space remaining on the volume. So we can definitely see that we used up some space when we copied over uh, some of the files. And when I'm done with using that iSCSI volume, I can go offline in the disk manager and then click over to the iSCSI initiator and then select our NAS and then click disconnect. Once you have a iSCSI volume on the NAS, you can connect to it and use it as a disk using any operating system. So if we want to use the iSCSI volume with Linux, I'm going to demo that by using my Kane distro box. First thing I have to do is to download some iSCSI software. And since I am using the Kane distro, which is Ubuntu based, I'm going to use the apt install procedure. If you are on a Red Hat based distro, you can use the yum install procedure. So I'm going to go ahead and type in sudo apt install open dash i scuzzy. And after a short while, everything is downloaded. Now that I have the iSCSI software on my machine, I can use the program iSCSI admin to discover the name of the iSCSI volume so that we can connect to it. So I'm going to do sudo iSCSI adm-m for discovery mode. 
dash T to send the targets over, and then dash P 169.254.10.230, which is the IP address of my NAS. And this comes back with just one line because it's only got one uh, target on that NAS. And so this portion here is basically the name of the target. So we're interested in it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, highlight it and copy it. And then now I'm going to start typing my login command, which is sudo iSCSI admin dash m node dash capital T for target. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste the name of the target in here. And then lastly, dash dash login. And unlike most Linux commands, this one actually gives us some feedback and tells us that we have successfully connected to the iSCSI volume. So now we can go ahead and run the ls block command to see that we now see the 250 gig volume as slash dev slash sdb. All right, so it looks just like a regular hard drive that's plugged in. And we can use the this type command and it comes back and tells us that the volume is wiped as expected because we had just uh, created it earlier. And just a note here is that I had earlier done the Windows Connect to it and put some files on it. After that, I actually had destroyed that particular LUN and recreated it. So it is actually fresh and clean. Another way to verify the iSCSI volume is attached as slash dev slash sdb is to look at the system log. I'm going to use grep command to look for any lines that mention SCSI. So I'm going to do grep dash i scsi oh, slash var slash log slash syslog. And here we see that we get more details of when the iSCSI volume from the QNAP NAS got attached to our machine. And we also get confirmation that it is attached as the raw device of slash dev slash sdb. And because my Linux system treats it just like a physical disk that was connected to the machine, I can put a file system on there and then start using the volume just like any other disk. So I can do sudo mkfs.ext4 slash dev slash sdb. Then I'm going to go ahead and create a, a mounting folder. So sudo maker slash mnt slash iSCSI. Then I'm going to go ahead and mount the iSCSI uh, volume that I just formatted. Sudo mount slash dev slash sdb slash mnt slash iSCSI. So let's go ahead and cd into the mount point, cd slash mnt slash iSCSI. And then take a look at the drive free space by doing a df dash h of dot. Now it tells us that it is in fact that 250 gig uh, volume that we have mounted and um, the bulk of it is available, right? Because we just created it and there's nothing on here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder called tester. So make the tester and it gives me an error. So apparently I have to do sudo make the tester. And then I'm gonna go ahead and CD into that folder. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just create a, a big file in here um, so that we can uh, look at space getting taken up. So sudo dd if equals slash dev slash u random, of equals big file dot dd, bs equals 1m, count equals 10m, status equals progress. And I'm going to let this run for a little bit here to create this giant file of random garbage. And at some point, I am losing my patience for waiting. So I'm just going to hit the control C to kill the program. And it looks like it's created about a 15 gig uh, file. So let's verify that by doing ls dash lh semicolon df dash h dot. So here we do see that we do have uh, this 15 gig, approximately 15 gig file. And then when we did the DF again, we can see that the file system has less space available now, right? Because we used up 15 gigs or so. All right, so now that we're done with this iSCSI volume, we should clean up like normal. So starting with a CD to get back to the home folder. And then I can unmount the device 
by using sudo umount of slash dev slash sdb. And then I am going to unwind the iSCSI protocol and log out of there so that I can detach uh, my Linux box. So the way I'm going to do this is basically it's the same command as I did for login. I'm going to just switch it for log out. So instead of retyping everything, I am going to do a control R, do a reverse search for SCSI ADM. And then so here's our command. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and go to the end of it and then change the log in to log out and then hit enter. And then once again, this program actually tells us that it has successfully logged out, which is great. Um, but I always want to verify with another means. So I'm going to run ls block again. And now I no longer see slash dev slash sdb. So it is completely detached from the Linux box. So we're free and clear. A few months ago, a subscriber to this channel who is a forensic analyst came across a NAS that had uh, a couple of iSCSI LUNs and they wanted to know whether one can use FTK Imager to image the drive. The answer is absolutely yes. So launching FTK Imager and I'm going to go ahead and click on the create disk image icon and in the select source pop-up I'm going to select physical drive. If you want to image the entire volume right just like a physical disk. Otherwise, you can certainly select logical drive if you are only interested in the logical files. But be aware that you can only see logical drives that are mounted. So if you don't have a drive letter assigned, you won't see that device in this menu. So once you have the iSCSI volume selected as the source, then you need to choose the destination for the image. And from there, it will ask you for the imaging type. I'm going to select E01, which is a standard for imaging. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the metadata, such as the case number, the evidence number, the description, the examiner name, etc. And then on the next panel, I'm going to select a destination location for the output. And then I'm going to give it a image base name, the fragmentation size, I'm going to change it to 2000 megs. I'm going to leave the compression as the default and then leave off the encryption. And then go ahead and hit go. Now this is going to take a little while. So through the magic of editing, I'm going to shorten this for you. And here we see the final results after it is done imaging and verifying. I'm going to go ahead and look at the files uh, with the file manager. And from here, we can see the image file and the log file. I always recommend reviewing the log file. So let's take a look at it here. Of interest is that FTK Imager got the drive model, which is a SCSI drive from the QNAP, and also the serial number. The serial number looks like some kind of a GUID. And then lastly, it also identified the interface type as SCSI. So it does a really good job at identifying what we had just imaged. And I see no errors, and we have an MD5 and a SHA-1 hash of the disk image. So we're good to go. So hopefully that answers the viewer's question on whether FTK Imager can be used to image a iSCSI device. So to sum it up, NAS file shares using the SMB protocol are easy to set up and straightforward to use. iSCSI, on the other hand, will take a few more steps in the configuration and then some special software like the iSCSI initiator may need to be installed to your system. But iSCSI does provide you with block level access to the disk volume. So for example, if I wanted to use FTK Imager to acquire the files from a file share, you only see the logical level. On the other hand, the iSCSI volumes are visible in both the physical and logical level. For more networking nugget videos, watch these videos here. Leave a comment below and make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.